Hello there! Uh, this video won't be a tutorial or anything like that, I just want to share some thoughts with you. So if you want a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial, this won't be the video for you, you can check out my other videos, but in this one I actually want to share some thoughts that I have during the open jam. So let's get it started. If you want to be a professional game designer, you can't rely on your willpower and motivation or inspiration to create your games, right? Uh, designers and game designers especially, and other creative jobs, are full of mysticism and subjectivity. I mean, uh, I see a lot of people talking about, hey, I am not motivated today so I won't do this work, I won't do this job, I won't do a piece of art today because I lack inspiration or I lack motivation for that. Um, and I was thinking about about that for a while because this weekend I was participating in the Open Jam, the Open Jam 2018, uh, which I was very hyped for. I was sharing every stuff that I that I knew about that. Uh, it was a very cool game jam because it uh, it is a game jam about open source and using open source tools and you all know that I love this I, I love using free and open source softwares so I was very hyped about that but uh, during the the meantime of the of the game jam I had some problems of my personal life coming all together at the same time and I really got dismotivated. I lost all my motivation and all my inspiration and all my drive to make a game for the, the open gem. So uh, I realized how fragile this, this, this is, right? Uh, this is very unstable. I mean, if we rely on our emotions to fulfill a work, we don't have control on that, right? I, I think we don't have control on our emotions. At, at least not to the point that we can say, okay, at this time I will enter in a motivated, full motivated state of mind in which I will make a very awesome piece of game here. I don't think this is actually on our control, right? We actually use inspiration and motivation as resources, but they they shouldn't be, right? Because they they you can uh, count how much uh, motivation you have or how much inspired you are. You can uh, I mean you can actually buy motivation or buy inspiration. You can get inspiration from others. Like hey man, can I loan? some inspiration from you how would you uh, how much would you charge for this amount of motivation i mean you can rely on that this is very uh amateur you mean i, I mean uh sometimes you will be inspired sometimes you won't be and this is very unstable so uh did you ever stop to think about how fragile this is uh what will happen when you are seriously making some some work from uh, a client or for a, a, a another studio and or for an uh, investor I, I, I mean if you are a self uh, if you are in studio and you are working for investors I mean what will you say for them when you are not motivated hey man uh, sorry about your spending your money but I am not motivated enough so I won't do this job anymore or that let's say you reach the deadline and they are on a meeting for for seeing what you developed and you just came out on the room and say hey guys i have nothing to show because i was not motivated enough that's all sorry and to the next time no you won't say that can you see how beautiful this is so i started to think that uh, i can rely on that i can make games professionally if I rely on my state of mind or on my emotions, this won't happen. So I started to think about for a while and I remembered that uh, a lot of the designers I follow, uh, not game designers specifically, but uh, designers in general, 
they all have uh, a design process. I see that from Ram from Influx and from Chris Doe from the future and they talk about this uh, design process, this methodology that you can state for you to follow some steps and if you follow these steps you will have something to work with at the end. So no matter uh, your state of mind, because I'm, uh, I know that something that makes us not uh, finish stuff, I guess, relies so much on motivation and inspiration is the fact that sometimes we don't know what to do next and if we are motivated we can do a lot of stuff and try out a lot of stuff because you know you are motivated so you have a lot of energy to work with but if you are not motivation if you are not motivated you won't do anything because you don't know what you should do next this is the topic of this video what is a design process? Uh, a design process is basically you stating some steps or some uh, tactics that you follow to reach a desired uh, result. So in my case would be a game or at least a prototype. But this video is not about my design process because I don't have one and this is actually what made me not having a good entry for the Open Gem 2018? I, I made a very poor entry. I could be, I could have made a better entry for the Open Gem. My entry was about six six hours long, uh, from start to finish, including the two hours I spent streaming. Uh, so I, I actually developed for like four hours which is not even five percent of the game jam time span the the open jam was 80 hours long and i spent four hours working on my game because i didn't i mean uh this is my excuse for for this but i know that is very amateur you mean i mean uh my excuse is i wasn't motivated but the real thing is that i'm not professional enough to make a, a game, to have a process to make a game without being, uh, without relying on my emotions yet. So this is the topic of this video. You should establish your design process so you make sure that every time you need to make a game, every time you need to deliver a game, be it for a client, be it for uh, investors, be it for the public, I mean your your consumers, you have a step-by-step -step process which if you follow it and you iterate on it, you will have a game, a good game at the end. I mean, no, it doesn't matter the quality of the, the first iteration because you the, the design process is just about having something at the end. And make sure actually to have iteration on your design process because this will be very important because you follow the process uh, let's say twice or, or three or as many times as you need to actually achieve your final product your game but you know that if you follow this pro this uh, this tactics you will have something at the end and if you input your your result on the next iteration it will become better and better and better so uh, that's it I know that this isn't the usual content of the channel but I felt like this is very important and valuable to share so I decided to share this thought with you uh, if this is a very obvious topic to talk about I mean did you already have a design process and <laughs> it was just me and my amateurism that find this useful please share with me your thoughts share share this in the comments because uh, I would love to know what you think about this what you think about taking the next step into being a professional being uh, working with games uh, in a professional way also if you find this valuable to you leave a thumbs up so I can keep digging in these topics I mean 
the topics of being an indie game developer not only tutorials and stuff like that but the whole set of being a game developer don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications this way you get immediate access once i release my content this video was brought to you by my beloved patrons and it went out three days early for them so if you find this useful as well check it out the perks and reward my patrons have by checking out my patreon so that's it thank you so much for watching keep developing and until the next time